before admitting the next patient, please check the device for operational readiness as described in the IFU and make sure that it is free from defects. Check to ensure that all parts are free from cracks and sharp edges. Also check to make sure hand ports are securely closed. Plug the device to the mains plug. You will find the main switch on the rear of the main column. Wait 7 seconds. Then press the Start Standby key. Your device is now ready to operate. Please note, only operate the device when all test steps and the automatic self-test have been completed successfully and no error is displayed. If the device has been switched off for more than two hours, all existing patient data will be deleted. If the device has been switched off for less than two hours, the following dialog window is displayed. By touching the New Patient button, all existing patient data is deleted. By touching the Current Patient button, the device continues operation with all existing patient data and the most recent settings. If your baby Leo is equipped with the option Servo Oxygen, the oxygen sensor, you must perform the oxygen sensor adjustment at least every 14 days to ensure an accurate oxygen measurement. An alarm will occur 14 days after the last oxygen adjustment. Note that this adjustment can be performed at any time. It is recommended to do the oxygen sensor adjustment before the next patient is admitted to Baby Leo. This way, you will avoid the adjustment alarm when the baby is in Baby Leo. The dialog will then show you the next adjustment date for the oxygen sensor. Before starting the oxygen adjustment, Baby Leo needs to be warmed up for 30 minutes and you need to ensure that no oxygen is introduced into the patient compartment, neither from the central gas supply nor from cylinders or external sources. If oxygen was used, air out the device well. Open the hood and the side access panels for at least three minutes. Close them after airing. Touch special procedures, open the oxygen tab, and then press Start to activate the oxygen adjustment. An info text will appear when the oxygen adjustment has been successfully completed. Now let's take a look at how to operate Baby Leo. In incubator operation, the best access to the patient is via the hand ports. The centrally positioned locks on the hand ports are also used for opening and closing. Using your hands or elbows, push down the ridged part of the lock. Both parts can be simultaneously opened with a single hand or elbow. To open the long side access panel, take hold of the recessed grip located in the middle underneath the top edge. Gently raise the access panel and fold it down. For the front side access panel, first gently raise the hood a little upwards, then raise the panel and fold it down. To close an access panel, fold it up and lower it slightly. When necessary, the bed support can be easily pulled out of the device from both sides to remove the patient for kangarooing, for example. Open one of the two side access panels, then the X-ray flap. Then gently pull out the bed support using the recessed grips. Opening and closing the hood can be done manually. It is purely mechanical, so no electrical power is required. Keep in mind that when the hood is closed, it will automatically operate as an incubator. To open the hood, take hold of the handle at the side of the hood and lift it forwards and up. To close the hood, simply pull the handle at the side of the hood downwards. Here we will demonstrate how to adjust the height, mattress tray and lock-unlock functions on the display. Let us begin with adjusting the height using the lifting column which can be done from both sides of Baby Leo. To move Baby Leo down, simply press the left hand foot pedal. And to move Baby Leo up, press the right hand foot pedal. Make sure that you have enough room above the radiant warmer so as to avoid any collisions. Secondly, to adjust the mattress for height and tilt, use the buttons on the mattress tray control panel. There are two buttons to raise and lower the mattress and two for tilting it. Pushing this button raises the mattress tray.
while pushing this button lowers the mattress tray. These two buttons here tilt the mattress according to the direction of the arrow. Note, the mattress tilt will stop when the bed is in even position. Notice that the LED in the buttons will go out when maximum height or tilt is reached. This can be done from both sides of Baby Leo. In incubator operation, set the lowest position for the mattress tray so that there is as much space as possible for the patient. This position also offers good access to the patient. In radiant warmer operation, Draeger recommends setting the highest position for the mattress tray. This position provides the most effective warming for the patient while also offering good access to the patient. To lock the screen, height adjustment and bed tilt mechanism, touch the lock button on the main menu bar. The right hand button locks the function and the left-hand button unlocks the function. Please confirm every selection by using the rotary knob. This helps prevent visitors from accidentally adjusting settings. The main screen includes the header bar, all alarms, both message fields and resets, therapy bar, monitoring area, and the main menu bar. You can also monitor the baby's central and peripheral skin temperature when temperature probes are used. Thermomonitoring continuously measures and displays the infant's skin temperature, even when skin temperature mode is not active. Switch to the thermomonitoring view to see the trend. Draeger developed features to exclusively support developmental care practices in terms of noise and light management. Using the developmental care view, you can clearly observe how the noise and light in the patient compartment vary over a period of time. Additionally, Baby Leo is equipped with a family view, where parents can view the most important therapy settings, giving them both reassurance and information. For safety reasons, when using this view, therapy values and settings cannot be changed. When operating the lights in Baby Leo, you need to use the key switch as shown on the screen. Use the key to switch the working light on the radiant warmer on and off. When using this light, you have the choice of three different light intensities. For the night light function, again use the key to switch the light on and off. The alarms on Baby Leo are indicated both visually, acoustically, and are automatically monitored. Three alarm priorities are indicated by three different color codes, depending on the level of priority. Once the urgency is under control, simply press the audio pause key to suppress the acoustic alarm. With the simple touch of a button, you can display all current alarms which are found on the header bar. Keep in mind that the alarm with the highest priority is always displayed first. To reset the alarm, touch the reset button in the header bar and confirm with the rotary knob. You can access the alarm history by touching the alarms button, then the alarm history tab. Here are some important notes to keep in mind when switching Baby Leo off. Before switching off, make sure the device is set to the correct position for transfer. This will prevent it from tipping over during transfer. Use the foot pedals to adjust the height until the red hatch label is no longer visible. Switch off the device by pressing the Start Standby key. This will display the dialog window. Next, you need to touch the shutdown button and confirm, as this will shut down all Baby Leo functions. Last, simply turn off the main switch of the main column and disconnect the mains plug. For safety and security, we recommend that you fasten the power cable to Baby Leo by wrapping it around the rail to avoid accidental injuries. It is important to note that a power failure alarm will occur if Baby Leo was not switched off the official way, for example by only disconnecting the mains plug. 
turn the main switch to the off position to stop the power failure alarm. After correctly switching the device off, if you are moving Baby Leo, you can use one of the casters as a steering caster. Put the brake in the upper position. The caster can only be moved in the longitudinal direction. This serves to push the device in a straight line. As an added feature, the BabyLog VN500 can be coupled to the Baby Leo for an easy transfer of the patient. First, ensure the Baby Leo is set to the correct height so it can eventually be attached to the Baby Log. The bedside coupling part can be mounted on the standard rail, either on the column side or front side. Second, attach the device side coupling part to the Baby Log VN500 trolley and check to ensure both parts are positioned at the same height. Then connect the device side coupling part with the bedside coupling part by moving the BabyLog VN500 towards the Baby Leo until the bed coupling clicks into position. Adjust the distance between the BabyLog and Baby Leo if needed. To disconnect, press the button and move BabyLog away from Baby Leo.